Welcome to the Influencer Show with your host, Trishon Ben Salmi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Influencer Show where I interview people who can help influence the way you live life in a number of different ways. I'm your host, E7, and today we have a very special guest with us. So, if you'd like to introduce yourself to listeners and let them know a little bit about you. Hi, nice to meet you all. My name is Celestia Barbie. I am originally a farm girl from a little village in the countryside called Bringhurst, and now I live in Leicester. I'm a confidence life coach, inspirational speaker, and owner of the Role Model Academy in Leicester. So yeah, loving life. Hi. (laughs) That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And why don't you share with the listeners why you do what you do? Yeah, it's a very long story, so I'm sure you'll all enjoy and get some fruitful elements out of what I say. So basically, when I was 14, I got in the wrong crowd at school, and it literally started off from going in one day, having my hair cut short, and the girls that I hung around with, they didn't want to be my friend anymore because they thought I looked like a lesbian and a mushroom head and they just didn't want to kind of hang around with me so I sat in the toilet on my own for a week at school and then after kind of the week was over I was like I need to make some friends so I got into the first group that wanted to actually accept me for who I was and that was the chaps at school so these are people who don't really care about working or completing GCSEs or doing anything really positive they're just kind of into like making a bit of a mess really (laughs) so hung around with them for the whole of school from year nine up to year 11 and I just really went off the rails so just started off smoking cigarettes at the bus stop and then I would start going out with guys who were older than me four or five years older than me out of school and these guys well the guy I was with he smoked weed so then I'll be smoking weed and that obviously paid a massive um toll on my mental health and then I was going out clubbing at age 14 using fake ID um and with the drinking the smoking and also doing class a drugs at age 14 it absolutely stripped me uh before i even got the chance to understand my real soul um sorry about that i'll just turn my my phone so yeah so left school with no gcses and no real purpose for life or for understanding who i was in any way shape or form then i basically didn't really know what to do so my mum had a pub we've owned this pub for like since I was really really young since I was like 10 years old so mum had a pub and I said to my mum can I just come and work for you because I'm not going to get a job um so yeah my mum said yeah come and work for us you can do some waitressing a bit of pot wash so I started off there and I've always had quite a confident personality at that point but I wasn't really um understanding that I was had to make anything out of myself I just sort of was living in the moment doing whatever I could to to enjoy life really um but having having left school still involved with the wrong crowd obviously that still was in place so I was hanging out with people in Corby which is um near to uh a place where I lived at my mum's house but it was really, really rough. I was hanging out with some really seriously druggy people at house parties and doing things that I really shouldn't have done. Um, and that literally went on consistently all the way through till I was 21. So 14 to 21, I was off the rails, drinking, drugs, smoking and stealing for seven years. Uh, and I completely lost all the real elements of my soul and I honestly did so many things that were the, a quick fix for a good feeling. And um, I think a lot of people are going through that now, just having that quick fix for a good feeling, thinking that everything's going to be okay. But really, you're just building a massive mountain for yourself 
Um, and you're just climbing the wrong mountain, basically. And that's what I was doing. I was climbing the mountain of death. So at 21, I did community service because I got, I got, um, I got caught stealing and I lost my driving license drink driving. So at this point, my mum was like, look, you can't live here. You need to move out. Like we, we lived in a village, so there was no access to, to, to anywhere to go. So I couldn't go, go very far. So I decided to move to Leicester and what it was, my mum and dad, they split up when I was 14. So my, my dad is unfortunately not here anymore, but my mum is 70. My parents are a lot older. Like my dad died when he was 83, my mum 70. So yeah, they're a lot, lot older than me. And my dad, very fortunate, had some bed sits um, available in Leicester. So I reconnected with my dad after seven years. And I just said, look, dad, I need to come and move to Leicester. I can't get anywhere. He said, look, I've got a bed sit for you move in. So I moved in within literally a couple of weeks, straight back into the wrong crowd, drinking, drug, smoking, stealing. Okay. And I did get to the point where I laid on my bed one morning. I came in on a, from a night out of doing um, a class drugs and I felt my heart basically near enough feel like something was going to stop it was absolutely horrific what I was doing to myself and I didn't see any other way I thought that that was the cool thing to do and I thought you were supposed to basically go out and get drunk all the time and I just thought that that was the best thing to do I just I just really really did get in the wrong crowd and um basically I don't know how this person came into my life, but I do believe in angels. So I met a guy um, a, the year before I moved into the flat from Northampton when I was going out there clubbing a lot. And he messaged me out the blue on Facebook and he said to me, Celestia, I really need somewhere to live. Do you have anywhere? Because I've got a job in Leicester and I'm looking for accommodation. I remember you telling me that your dad was a property developer. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, I'll speak to my dad and see if you can move in because I think there's a bed sit below me. So this guy moved in a couple of weeks later and he didn't drink, he didn't smoke, he didn't do drugs and he didn't steal, okay? So after a few weeks, I'm hanging out with him, I'm trying to make him do drugs I'm trying to make him steal okay and for one minute he did actually do a, a class a drug with me and it was totally out of his character but that is because I was influencing him to do that okay but as time went on he actually started teaching me lessons and these lessons were so simple and it was just about don't like you don't need to smoke. Let's go and let's go for a walk for a park. Let's go and do something that's just like let's go to the cinema. Let's go and do something rather than using these habits to, to pass time. So I started listening to him. And after six months of smoking 30 fags a day for seven years, I quit smoking. And I didn't quit smoking even like thinking about it. I just quit. It just stopped. I didn't go, oh my God, I've got four weeks and then I'm going to stop smoking and I have to do it on this day. It was literally like, it just came out my system like it wasn't even supposed to be there. So yeah, so quit smoking. Then I stopped doing drugs. And the last one was the stealing. That was the hardest one to stop because stealing is extremely addictive when you know how. And then eventually I got to the point where I was, my brain was obviously so damaged. Like I sit here looking good, got 21,000 followers on Instagram. I'm bigging myself up now, 21,000 posts, sorry, on Instagram. And my brain has been absolutely demolished. Like I cannot put words to describe it to you 
how much I used to torture my own self and my own brain by these drinking and these drugs and stuff. It really did ruin a massive chunk of my life. And um, yeah, I, I kind of, what happened then was obviously I'm still doing a bit of waitressing, by the way, living in Leicester. And then my dad's like, kind of, would you like to come around my house and cook me some food? So I'm like, well, I'm not built the relationship with my dad at this point. We, we'd missed seven years of, of, our, of our dad and daughter time. So the, obviously this guy who had been helping me kind of change myself said, look, let's go on your dad's and cook, he, you can cook him some food and we can just spend some time. Started going around my dad's house. It was only walking around the corner. And after a few times, I realized that I actually really get on with him. He's actually a really nice person. And he said to me, look, we're going to get you on a, on a, a college course. You can, you can pick any course you want. Let's get you on a college course and let's get you a gym membership. So obviously never been gym, never really done anything that's kind of positive at this point in my life. So I did the college course and at this, I'd still lost my license at this time. So I was on the bus, walking in the rain, the snow, everything. I was hating it. I found it really difficult to learn because my brain had been so trashed. So to feed information into somebody's brain Mm. that's been hurt or damaged is is a lot harder than just feeding it into somebody who loves life so i finished the course my attendance was 50 percent, which was better than nothing <laughs> and i also was a regular gym user then what happened was by going to the gym it started to like give me some kind of different element to who I was so I used to go back to my mum's house in the countryside on my own and I would sit on a bench and I would spend time to myself and by doing that I started to realize that I was a skeleton and that I was a human with a heart and I had a brain and I had lungs and liver and kidneys and 206 bones in my body and I was like wow this is incredible. And then I started to think about the universe. So I would look at, at night, I would lie outside in the grass on my own. And I would just look up to the universe in the countryside and connect to the amazing, the amazingness of what's around us. And then I was like, okay, so I'm a skeleton. Cool. Then I'm on a, on a planet in the universe okay that is incredible i didn't know that until i was you know what i mean 21 22 i didn't know that i was on a planet in the universe and then i realized that we're not just on a planet in the universe we're on a planet and the planet is floating in the universe so there's one thing about being a skeleton another thing about being on a planet but then actually knowing that the moon and the sun are floating and the stars above us are all floating. And then to think if we're not floating, then you must be absolutely crazy to think that we're not floating. So when I realized that we are floating, that's when I realized, wow, this is absolute magic what we're doing here. And that's when I thought about, all the people I've met over the seven years of being off the rails, how many people were damaging themselves, whether it's in a nightclub, whether it's even in a shopping center, how many people are not, are not thinking properly, using eye contact, smiling, body language. And I just remembered all the emotions and feelings that I'd been through. And I just thought like how many people out there and not knowing that they're on a planet floating in the universe. So that was my like Yahika moment. That was the moment when I was like, <laughs> wow, this, this, I have a message to share. And this, this is, this is the gift. So what happened then is I was at college and a friend of mine came up to me and he said, Celestia, would you like to be in a music video modeling and dancing? So obviously at this point, I've, 
I liked modeling, but I've never, I'm not a dancer. I've never danced before. So I went down to the Sugar Hut in Essex and I was in Dappy's music video from N-Dubs. It's called Animal. I was in this video and I was only there probably for about 15, 20 seconds with another 10 or 11 other girls throwing her hands around, having a bit of a laugh. Hmm. But what happened is this video went on social media and it had over a million hits. So when the video went viral, I got inboxes from people that I'd never met before saying, I like, I like your hair, I like your tattoos, um, et cetera else. So after abusing, physically abusing myself for seven years, hanging around with the wrong crowd, not really completing a college course, people were messaging me, telling me positive things about me. And I was like, oh my God, this feels so great. Like mm. they actually care about me. They actually care. Some, somebody out there that I've never met had just commented and cared about me. And it made me feel really, really good about myself. So I thought, what can I do next that's going to help me stand out from the crowd and attract people to say nice, positive things about me, right? So... I started off in modelling, so I modelled all across the UK in lots and lots of different projects and assignments, and then I did that for quite a while, and that helped me build, start to build my social media up. You can only model for so long until you realise, yeah, you are using your intelligence because your fashion, the way you pose, the backdrops, the, the quality of people you work with. It is, it is an intelligence of the, 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 um, the journey of that. But my personality is my gift. And my dad's always said to me, Celestia, you'll be fine because you've got a good personality. So then what happened was I um, kind of did the modeling and then I thought, why don't I start applying for some competitions? So then I applied for, I did the, the Miss Leicester, Miss Gala G Casino, and then I did Miss Midlands UK and the British Bikini Championship. So all four of these competitions were really good because it got me on stage. I started to use my personality um, and I was using my image as well. But obviously at this point, my personality it was big, but there wasn't much intelligent ingredients. It was just like, hi, my name is Celestia, and <laughs> hi. And, you know what I mean? There was no real backbone to what I was talking about. It was just a, 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 a show up and a nice dress kind of moment. And then I realized the next step was to go on TV. So I started applying for TV shows. So I've been on Channel 4. Um, that was a bit of a shot in the dark. And um, that was called Naked Attraction, which was not the, not the ultimate show that I wanted to choose, but it was the only show that accepted me. So I kept applying, I kept applying, and it was the only one that kind of let me in the door. So I just sort of went for it. Um, but at that time, I knew I was a skeleton on a planet floating in the universe and were actually born naked. So I just went with it. And that's why I went on the show. And then the second show I went on was for Channel 5. Um, and that was um, Alan Titchmarsh Masterpiece. And that was really good. I brought my mum on that. Me and my mum had, um, had a kind of a game. To, me and my mum had to play the game together. So it was really, really fun. My mum's like nearly 70 at the time. So it was really nice. She'd never been on TV either. So to bring my mum on TV was like, Gina! <laughs> <laughs> it was sick and then the third show I went on was uh, 100% hotter than so that again was me and my mum so second time mum got on tv and that was for channel five and that was all about me and my mum's relationship and um again that was really 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 good so then I've got a lost soul turned model tv show music video whatever person who was kind of trying to personally develop myself in a very creative way but I wasn't still understanding what my purpose was so 
what happened was my dad um fell really really ill he got dementia and his bones were crumbling and he had to go to the care home because he was like basically pissing himself at night and he kept falling out the bed and smacking his face on the side of the, the drawers and all sorts of things so my dad had to go to the care home so during that time i was supporting him um being with him as much as i could and i said to my dad dad like like he, my, we all knew that my dad only had a certain amount of time to live. We all knew it. As soon as you go into a care home, the time bomb is ticking from there onwards. So I said to my dad, I said, dad, if you could leave me anything, could you leave me this old garage in Leicester on Kingsley street? So my dad said, if that's what you like, that's what I'll leave you. So this was literally an old dusty garage, three rooms in one with a load of boxes, spider webs, and just, old bits of wood it was just an old an old garage so what i decided to do is i decided to become an entrepreneur so i the first thing i did was i invested some money into a fashion line and i got a massive bulk of clothes made from china which was an absolute nightmare and I went to the clothes show in Birmingham and I had a stand at the clothes show in Birmingham. And I thought, I've invested this money and I'm going to make 60 grand. That's what I thought, right? In a week. I just thought I'm going to sell out. There's not going to be one, one pair of shoes left. I'm going to sell out. And that was completely the opposite of what happened. I made like a grand and a half and I wasted a lot of money and it completely was a complete mess up to be, to be honest, but it was a really good experience considering I threw myself in the dark with it basically. Yeah, I'm gonna have a drink of water. Mm. So then what I did, I decided to build a studio out of this old garage and it took about nine months to create it and um it's great because i took loads of photos so during the creation period i was taking photos of the start of the project up to date to the project is now which <clears throat> i absolutely love because you always look back and you sometimes you think how far have i come and then you look back and you then you, you look back at the photos and you're like no i have to keep going because this yeah. was an old garage you understand um so then what happened was I built, built the studio and I had a launch night. 70 people came to the launch night. And after sort of the first six months, I was pretty, pretty sure that I was building a modeling agency. That, that was the plan. I'm on my own, no team, nothing. Got a beautiful studio, photography studio. And I'm going to build a modeling agency. So I start building the agency and I got, between 50 and 70 people on my books. And then I realized that I was just sitting behind a computer screen, passing people around. And it, I didn't feel like I was gaining enough value for myself. I felt like I was more just putting everybody else in the spotlight, but not myself. And I'm somebody who likes to put 50% of myself in the spotlight and 50% of others in the spotlight, but I was just putting 100% of others. So that's why I was struggling with a little bit. So in 2017, I had a moment where I thought again about all the people I'd met when I was off the rails. And I just thought like about even now, like in 2017, when I was walking down the street or doing anything I'd always look at people and I'm one I'm a lucky I'm a lucky lucky person like I'll look I'll smile when I walk in a room my presence is known like I'm not mm. somebody just to like walk in and like stick to the floorboards like I am Celestial Barbie like I walk in like I'm alive and when I walk down the street I walk like I'm alive and I feel like everybody around me was a walking a lot of people are not walking like they're alive they're walking like they're half dead so I know that sounds bad, 
But when you have put effort into the gym and effort into like self-development, you do start to feel like people around you are not at the same yeah. energy level as you, right? So I decided to do um, a session for £45, which was a women empowerment session. And this was in 2017 at Christmas. And um, a, a group of women turned up and they came for six hours and it was really, really cool. And I just literally like, asked some different questions and we all spoke out and we all told like part of our stories and it was just like really, really nice. And then obviously knowing that I could get like six women there, I thought, well, if I can get six women there and there's over 8 billion people on this planet, like I can do anything in this studio because I always, Whenever my mum, whenever I'd go in mum's car, I would sit on the motorway, like I'd sit, sit in her car on the motorway. And the amount of traffic that goes by you in the space of like 10 minutes is actually off the scale. Mm -hmm. And when you fly in from any city or any country and you fly in back to London, Gatwick, and you look over London, like we are in a pool of billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of souls. So why can't I be successful? If I'm one soul that is penetrating powerful energy through this universe and have really good morals and standards now of who I am, why can't I be successful? So that's when I had the real courage to start the journey of becoming a life coach and an inspirational speaker. So I kind of did like the Toastmasters and I didn't really, it wasn't really for me. I'm not somebody who can box my words. I like to be quite free and open with my mentality and how I speak. Um, somebody who likes to kind of speak more from the natural ingredients of my soul rather than like a proper scripted act or something. Um, so just started like challenging myself a lot. And I took a whole year where I did group sessions. So I worked with men, women, and children from age seven upwards up to 95, a woman who was 95 came. Gay, gay and lesbian, ho the homeless, disabled. Um, and I just literally worked with these people for a year. So I would do group workshops every month, back to back, completely raw. And um, it, it was really fulfilling. And the more I did it, the more I realized everybody's got a soul. Everybody's got emotions. There's nothing to be scared of. We're only human and people love to speak out. They love the attention. And if, I've, if I can create attention like I have through my modeling and through my, through my TV and everything, if I can create that core attention, I can create attention for others. So by coming with me and by being coached by me, I can show you the way to create your own personal development and your own attention. Um, one gift I have, and that's the eye for quality. I've got a really good eye for quality and I can look over somebody's page or somebody's work and I can tell them where they could improve and up the quality, which would then gain them a bigger audience. Um, so yeah, uh, that took up to 2008, end of 2018 with the group sessions. And then 2019, um, so this is the last sort of year and five, we're in five months already, but it's a bit crazy to say we're in five months in 2020 because obviously this coronavirus has taken five months. It's, it's so strange to say, isn't it really? None of us have had the opportunity yet to experience a massive amount out of this year. Um, so yeah, so since then I've been doing one-to-one -one clientele and I have, I did that for like the whole of last year and work building up my one-to-one -one clients. You start off um, charging like a nice amount of money, but nothing that's going to press people. You've got to attract the public to start with. So you understand yourself and what you can give to people. There's a lot of learning curves in life coaching. You've got to really trust that you can adapt in situations that you don't really know you're always putting yourself into um so yeah coming up to like 2020 now i um i i've i did a big show in sorry in 2019 in august 
I did a massive show called the Role Model Awards. That was my first Role Model Awards. But prior to that last year as well, I did three other shows. So I did a show in London with Mr. England. And then I did another show in Birmingham called The Matrix. 400 people came to that. That was my first show. And then the third, the third show was the, was the Role Model Awards. So when I did the Role Model Awards, that's when I realised I was a role model. Um, and I love it now. People say, oh, you're a model. No, I'm a role model. And saying that, it's bossy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I ain't a model, darling. I'm a role model. And it's like, woo! It just feels right. And then... I, I wrote my I written my first book as well last year, How to Find Your Real Soul and Become a Boss, which that's how I met you. Yeah. At at that event. Um and from then I came into the placement of doing the role model awards. So the role model awards, I headhunt twenty-five of the best role models from across the UK. Uh, in an on-stage awards ceremony. And then I also headhunt 40 models and 12 high street designer brands. And then I sell like three or 400 tickets in a top venue with great live acts. And it's absolutely fabulous uh, with a celebrity judge panel. So I did that um, in August last year and I'm doing that again in, I'm going to do it in November this year because of the corona. I've had to kind of forward the date. So I've got a massive project um, creating that. And I do do it on my own. I don't have a team. I'm still on my own doing everything. Um, so I've been using this time really well. And for the last three months, I've been creating. You have to have a product, you see. I've been, yeah, you can have you can do coaching sessions or whatever, but if you've got a solid, a solid product that you can sell. Um, so that's what I've been doing the last, the last four months I've been creating uh, a few different work specific courses for people to enroll on. This is going to step up my whole business. And uh, I've also been building the second floor to my studio. I've built an absolutely fantastic meditation room um and yeah everything is looking re really really good now i'm just injecting and saving the last bit of money to really create more of a vision for upstairs um and yeah i'm i'm just sort of getting to the point now where i'm i'm doing my sales funnel videos i'm creating powerful courses i'm actually teaching life coaches to become life coaches i'm um doing a social media workshop where i'm helping people do their social media. And then I'm also, I also offer a free day course to help people find their real soul. So it's called how to find your real soul and become a boss. And then I've, I've just finished also this year, I've just finished my second book and I'm having that, that published um, in the next month. So I have it printed and published in the next month. So all in all up to date, I've got two websites, a fantastic business that's going to really thrive in the next coming years. And I've got a hell of a lot of work still to do. And I know that I'm a VIP and VIP means very inspirational person. And um, I think, um, yeah, I think that you've got to kind of keep believing in yourself. And that's why I love connecting with, with young people like yourself. Like you are a huge inspiration. Like the first moment I've seen your family, come through that door and you were like we're the winners you like it was it was just, you, you was just amazing like you all came through and then your younger brother like the younger brother like amazing like you're so young and to have him like following in your footsteps is just absolutely unbelievable isn't it though <laughs> yeah that he might like you're his role model do you know what I mean you're yeah. his role model and I think that's fantastic so yeah there you go that's 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 the story of Balamori <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely that's an absolutely amazing story so inspiring and yeah. it really does like show so showcase so many different values that you were able to install into yourself despite those hard times as a whole really. yeah yeah, yeah. it's actually amazing thank you oh, thank you for sharing that's all right and what would you say was the biggest influence on you that you wish you had known sooner 
Um, the biggest influence on me that I wish I'd known sooner. I wish I'd known sooner how amazing I was. I know it sounds big headed, but <laughs> mm-hmm. to believe in yourself is can be really difficult sometimes. Yeah. And I think I wasted seven years of my life not really seeing the beauty of who I am. And that was a huge loss to me. Like seven years is a huge amount of time to like just be somebody who was basically nothing. Um, so yeah, I think that that is what what I lost. What that that's the answer. Just myself, really. And that's actually really important because, like, when people often hear answers like that, they're thinking, "Oh, you're full of yourself," but actually, like, loving yourself and just showing that you care. So sometimes even take time away from others simply shows yeah. that how much you value yourself as well as others yeah definitely 100 percent, definitely and as well your actions really do dislike detriment other people around you like my mum really suffered from the way i acted my sister my brother but like everyone around you if you act like a fool everybody around you like suffers from that and yeah. sometimes when they love you you don't realize what you're doing to them you're just being selfish basically and that that's how I was being I was being really selfish and I'm just so glad that I'm not that person anymore mm, that's I, that, I totally totally agree with that really it's really really important I think that you guys as listeners should really try and implement values and key life skills that can actually help you later on in life because in like today's day and age everyone's focused on oh do they like me and things like that but it's actually about being content with yourself and then they shall come along as time as time goes really yeah definitely yeah um how do you prefer to influence others to change the way they live their lives for the better my mission is to add value to women men and children within the way they think act and look and i think many people choose silly actions because there's a part of them that doesn't care about their lives Mm. so to awaken people however you can whether it's making somebody laugh making somebody feel good if you can awaken them in an area of their life that they haven't touched or felt before then that can really display like new elements to who that person is. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Can you repeat the question again, please? Okay. Um, so how do you prefer to influence others to change the way they live life for the better? Yeah, like I say, my, my main influence is, is coming on to my life coaching workshops and courses that's my goal i've been been influencing people walking through their doors like trying to make as much impact with just being a pure natural soul to this planet but you can only give so much energy away without kind of just it sweeping away in the wind so my my goal is just to getting as many people part of my academy and that's how i'm going to be influencing from now on but then also on the flip side of that i really want to get on stage and be um speaking a lot more because the more you go on stage the better i think it can get for you because being on stage you you're being you're not only being heard by a bigger crowd but um vision wise if you're filming yourself on stage it, it, it snowballs a lot bigger for you yeah um so yeah so i just want to kind of get out there more really it's a big big world out here we're all we're all kind of walking through doors trying to make the most out of our time here um so yeah, but I do believe the best come together in the end. Like I do believe in energy and I do believe in intelligent energy. So I believe that we all, we all come together. The ones that believe in themselves come, to, come together with people, other people yeah. who believe. And then we, 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 we connect our energy and it booms even higher than it would just be like single energy. Does that yeah. make sense? We yeah, walk together. You yeah, get it, huh? like attracts like, and if yeah. you're vibrating as like your higher self, 
then simply those people will come along when the time is ready, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, what would you say people should do to stay motivated during moments of crisis? Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. No, I think um, setting goals, goal setting is a huge thing to do. Sometimes people just oh, this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. It's like, okay, well, there is a way to make things work. So you need to sit down and you need to set some goals. You need to make a plan. There's, there's always a way to do things differently. There's could be 10 ways or 20 ways or even 50 ways to do something differently. But it's a case of sitting down and creating a plan. And if you can't do that plan yourself, that's why there's coaches. That's why we exist. We help people help people have a different vision of what they've currently got or their current environment. Um, but going back to the fact we're on a planet floating in the universe, I always if I have a, a moment of all oh, this, all that, it's like, hold on a minute. I'm on a planet floating in the universe. We live in a very, very extremely materialistic world that really does take over the human emotion. Mm, so yeah um for me it's just about having um more of a spiritual mindset when it comes to to panic and realizing that nothing like nothing lasts forever so you can panic and panic and panic but all you're doing is you're you're actually making yourself look older and you're actually like squeezing the insides of your body together which is actually creating you're creating anxiety for yourself yeah. So I always think speak to sweet speak to a professional or write 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 your goals down and try and create a plan that can change your current reality. That is so so such um, powerful words of advice. Thank you so much for sharing, and I hope that you listeners are then taking notes and making sure you do not miss these golden nuggets. Um, I like that nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> um, Celestia, what is your passion and end goals? So my passion is to meet as many people as I possibly can. Uh, I love people. That is mm, from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes. I adore people. Everyone's got a different smile, a different handshake, a different way they stand, a different fashion sense. Everyone's voice tone is differently. Everyone's interests are different. And I just think it's mesmerising how we're all so human but we have so many different tastes and types Mm. um so for me it's about meeting as many people and hopefully inspiring as many people with my inspirational soul um and just kind of like making the most out of teaming up as well i think you can always go alone and think you're alone, but like we're doing now, we're teaming up as a pair. I think it's really important that you, that you collab and make, make an impact together as well as alone. Cause it's, it's, you can do it if you reach out. It only takes one message to say, hi, uh, would you like to come on a live or would you like to do something? We can inspire others. Yeah. So for me, it's just about, realizing that there is so many avenues to go down to inspire others and I think a lot of people don't realize that some people are so selfish and they're so in it just for themselves and I would much prefer to run across the finish line with a million people and we're all holding hands together jumping in the air than just me on my own going woo I made it like that isn't the goal yeah. um so yeah future goal for me like I have I have huge dreams. Um, I would love my own TV show. I would. I. I see myself as like Ellen. I'm. I'm big. My, I'm. A, I'm a big boy in this game. I'm not a small fish, and I know that I'm not. And I want. I want to be like yourself. I want to have more and more books to author. I want to definitely have my own TV show. I'm not too sure of the the full definition of that yet. That's something that hopefully will come. Um, so yeah, I just want to be. I don't care about being number one. That isn't. That isn't. It's not. A, it's not a competition. This isn't for me. This is a competition that 
that this is a competition just for myself to be the best version of myself. Um, so my goal is just to be healthy, happy, with nice children, an understanding of, of who I am and who they are as well, not just kind of living for the dream. Actually, if I do have children, I want like your mum does like she brings all of you along and you're all supportive of each other like I want that for my children I want I want us all to to kind of clap and grow together as a family so I think um I, I just I just want to get to the point in my career where I can go on stage and people people are like I know I know that she's worked really hard to get where she has and that's when people clap me on stage, that's where I want the clap to come from. I want the clap to come from, she's worked for this. Not, oh, she's on stage and she's selling a product or a service. She's worked really, really hard to get this moment. And that is, that will be great for me. There's, there's no end goal. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't really ever want to make an end goal because I love life and I want life to live forever. So to say, oh, an end goal is like, the end goal is, death so I don't want to look at an end goal I just want yeah. it to be consistently evolving and I want to be a really funky granny on Instagram like in really like <laughs> pink purple clothes when I'm older I want to be one of them like you know them really funny ones <laughs> yeah. yeah I just I just want to live forever and want to make life as colorful as possible to all those who come in contact with me oh that is absolutely amazing and yeah, that that <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. I mean, all of all your answers, they really are inspirational. I think that's actually really great, like what you do as a whole, like just like the whole social media or everything, because that way you're then able to share your story. And yeah. when you let's say when you go on stages to give talks, people then understand where you've come from, and they're not just giving that oh yeah. <laughs> they, actually yeah know, what, they actually know that you're here to give value and provide actionable steps that they can then use in their lives yeah definitely so i think um a lot of people like i said before they don't believe in themselves so like you can go on stage you don't you can go on stage and you if you just be like even just by being happy and confident you're giving people something just by turning up and I think a lot of people don't realise that. So that what that's what makes it so more easier for people like me is because I'm looking around like, oh, no, no one's stepping up to the game here. So let's just go step it up, innit? Mm, yeah, definitely. What, you know what I mean? Let's go step it up. So yeah, that's where I'm at, really. This, this, whole, this whole year for me at the moment is a step up period. Um, so yeah, just excited, really. But it, it is a big networking game as well. Sometimes you've got to... <laughs> really be networking to finding other goals that you want to achieve but that again having your own having your own door having your own event is also a great way to become successful because you don't have to wait for answers or think that you're not are you going to get it or you're not going to get it you just create your own stage and I think people as well don't realise that. Like if you're a singer, an artist, whatever you are, you can ha ha hire your own little venue and do something yourself. Like it can be done. So that that's that's really good advice for anyone out there, I think, if they're looking to show off their talents, just create your own event. That is so, so very true. And I totally, totally do agree with that. Um, if you had a microphone and you could say one thing to the world that would have a lasting influence, what would it be and why? You must be a fool to harm your own soul. Uh, that's very, very key. And I hope, um, could you maybe um, explain why you said that for those who don't quite understand? Yeah. Being a person now of health and of happiness, I realise health is wealth. It is the number one thing. Like without the health, you have absolutely nothing. Um, and I think whether you're, even if you're not drinking, drug smoking or sealing, even if you're just eating crappy foods or hanging around with bad people or 
doing something that is not really excelling you in your career, like you must be a fool to harm your own soul. Even if you're in the wrong job, you're being a fool because you're harming your own soul, doing something that you don't like. Why would you be above ground with your heart beating, your eyes moving, your mouth moving, your hair growing, living this incredible human feeling of, of life and you're, you're using your time doing things to yourself that are, uh, are harming your mentality, your body, your life. So I think the quote, you must be a fool to harm your own soul is so powerful because if you go to do something, you go, actually, no, you must be a fool to harm your own soul. I ain't going to do that. I just think it's got real strength in, in them few words. I think it's really, really good. I think it's really good. You say it. Say it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely about... Just no, re repeat after me. You must be a fool to harm your own soul. You must be a fool to harm your own soul. Booyaka <laughs> shot! <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's the one. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to those who maybe they might have had their own very million pound idea at a time like this? Oh, what do you mean? A time at the coronavirus? Yeah. Just get planning. If you've got a big idea, if you've got a million pound idea, then just get planning. Get, get applying for the Dragon's Den if, it's, if applicants are still going. Um, I always think if you've got a big idea, obviously, have you got... First thing is, is have, you got the, have you got the money to support the dream? Mm. If not, then you, you, need, you need an investor. Because uh, we can all have big ideas. I've got loads of big ideas. But if you haven't got massive money, um, any idea, any entrepreneurial idea costs money. Even life coaching, it costs money. Like anything you do as an entrepreneur is an investment to yourself. But if you keep investing it week by week, month by month, it all builds up. and it all stays. So it is a powerful thing to become an entrepreneur. Um, but my main advice is, like I say, if you've got a big idea, keep it to yourself. Don't blag about it. Don't talk yeah. about it. Because if you, if you do, you're going to give your idea to somebody else. And if they've got the cash flow, they'll beat you to it. Um, so, yeah, I just think it's hard. It's hard to, if you don't tell me the idea, then it's more difficult. Have you got, have you got an idea for the million pounds? I don't know. It's not, it's not for me. It's just uh, because like some of the listeners, some of them are um, trying to start their own business. So it's just like a bit of advice for yeah. them. Don't invest a billion, a million, is it a billion or a million? Don't go and invest it mm. all. Start small and grow big. That's yeah. the advice. Start small and grow big. Don't go and throw your cash into an empty pot and go and waste your money. Yeah. Um, that's the best advice I'd give anybody for starting a business is start small and go big. Mm. Think about your branding, think about influencers, get people on board. Like a lot of, a lot of people that have been in my studio, I'm always tagging and advertising them, promoting them. Uh, it's so crucial to have your social media, right? So yeah, start, um, start online. Don't waste your time printing off flyers and, walking around the streets it's a waste of time I've done it before door-to-door -door knocking all of that absolute waste of time you might make somebody smile but you're not going to be become overly successful with social media at the forefront of all of this so my advice is just no matter what business idea you've got start online get attraction and then grow the mammoth and then uh, you, you, you'll be able to kind of blow it from there. So I think social media is fantastic. Like my, my studio is on a street um, and you would just drive by it. You wouldn't even know that it was there. It hasn't got windows or anything. So my whole business is built from social media. And if you go on to um, my business page, which is at boss underscore studios underscore VIP, you'll see all the thousands of people that I've had through the door. And considering, like I say, it is just uh, somewhere that you would drive by, social media has been a huge impact to my career.
Oh, that's absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for sharing. And I hope that you listeners are definitely taking notes. Um, if you had to be another person for one day, who would it be and why? I would be Oprah Winfrey because she is a woman of power to me. She's somebody who is, I love, I, I, I would love to be as successful as her. I think she has done really, really well. I was actually watching a video of her back in the 1990s, a couple of days ago, and she was interviewing a woman with 94 personality traits. And I, she was sitting there interviewing this woman and I just thought that could be me. I could literally be sitting on a show like Oprah Winfrey in 1990 and I could be interviewing women on 90, whatever personality traits. But I just feel like I can interview people just as good as I can talk yeah Um, so for me she would just she's just a role model she's fantastic she's just amazing like she 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 was actually had a live show in in America like a couple of months ago but the thing is I went New York at Christmas in December and her show was in January and I only found out the show was in January like on the 1st of Jan or the 2nd of Jan and I'd just come back from New York and I wasn't in a and then obviously the corona had come in but it it was still her show still went on Mm. in January and um yeah, I'd have, I really want to see, because I've seen the Tony Robbins, I've seen um, Gary V, I've seen Grant Cardone, um, I've seen, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. He's from America. <laughs> He's from America. Um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Hold on, I've got to think of it. Uh, what's his name? preacher he wears like he wears like font on his t-shirt i don't think i've heard of him i'll have to think about his font <laughs> i'm trying to think of him he's something preacher i'm trying to figure but he's amazing anyway i watched him um in america if i could think of his name i'll say it but he's really cool uh, but it's really important when you when you are a speaker or a coach it's really important to go and watch people in your industry speak and pay to watch them as well. Um, it really does help because you you could learn from their body language or how they sit on stage or how they walk out or like the content that they use on the PowerPoint slide behind them. You you can pick up on lots and lots of different ways of, of putting yourself together. So personal development for me will always be there. I'll always be um, putting myself uh, supporting others basically and putting myself into going to watch others and see others because I think it's fantastic it's really really cool I love I love inspirational speaking because it's it's somebody's real personality there's no like there's no like act predominantly it is the person talking about themselves and the journey they've taken and I just think it's really really inspirational to hear hear different people's um, perspectives and actions and business ideas i think it's really fun and it works really well yeah that's absolutely amazing and i'd like to thank you for coming on the influencer show today so um where can people find you if they'd like to find out about any upcoming things you may have yeah so the best way to find me is on instagram i am on facebook linkedin twitter uh so yeah follow me on instagram it is at celestia which is c-e-l-e-s-t-i-a underscore boss b-o-s-s underscore v-i-p so that is at c-e-l-e-s-t-i-a underscore boss underscore v-i-p and then the studio instagram is boss underscore studios underscore v-i-p Oh, thank you so much and thank you for coming on the Influence Show today. That's all right. It's been an absolute pleasure and I wish you all the best of luck in your career. I think you're an amazing young lad and you just have the whole world at your feet. Oh, thank you so much. And also thank you to you listeners for tuning in today. And if you would like to have the chance to be featured on the Influence Show, be sure to email us. The email is going to be popping up on the screen and I hope you guys have a great day. That's it for me. Bye.
Bien, peace out. <laughs>